so it's 7 o'clock now so let us uh, begin with today's class so i'll be just sharing my screen yeah so are you able to see my screen uh, can you just reply on the chat box okay thank you so uh, in today's class uh, we will be going through the week 3 contents uh, which are basically on two different uh, topics although they are related the first topic is the Taylor table approach uh, for constructing finite difference schemes and the second topic is actually uh, using the modified wave number approach in order to calculate the order of accuracy of any schemes I mean at least in a qualitative sense okay so I'll be mainly covering the first part today I mean uh, whatever was there in your weekly contents I'll just briefly revise the first part and we will try to solve some problems on this first part okay um, there is another tutorial session on Sunday from 3 to 4 uh, where the second part will be mainly covered that is the modified wave number approach okay so uh, we will stick to the Taylor table approach uh, today okay uh, one announcement uh, which I wanted to make that uh, these are not the lecture sessions okay uh, these are not the lecture sessions these are just tutorial sessions uh, we are expected to solve the problems uh, okay based on the weekly contents so you all are expected to go through the weekly contents before uh, coming to this class ideally so that it will be easy for you to solve the problems and then you will gain much more appreciation if you have already gone through the weekly contents okay so that is very important it is very important to go through the weekly contents okay before uh, joining this particular class and uh, the examples which will be solved in these tutorial classes they might be helpful to solve your assignment questions as well as your uh, some in some uh, examinations or some, uh, some which whichever is relevant okay so uh, that is the main kind of objective so once you go through the theory in the weekly contents on the NPTEL website these uh, sessions will help you to uh, solve the problems based on the theory which was covered in the weekly contents okay uh, I hope I am clear okay uh, any issues with this please let me know in the chat box okay and uh, regarding the presentation this will be shared in the Google Drive okay and I'll just share the link with you now Yeah, so the link which I have shared in the chat box, uh, this is the Google Drive link where you will find the material of the tutorial session. Okay, along with that, uh, these videos are being recorded. Okay, and um, they will be uploaded on the YouTube. So if any of your friends have missed attending the session, you can ask them to go through uh, to go through these. Uh, YouTube videos okay so that is also possible yeah so are these uh, links uh, visible to you uh, can you just reply on the chat box I hope they should be okay thank you Arun. okay so I hope there is no issue and uh, I hope I am clear with uh, what these sessions are intended to be okay these are not the lecture sessions you have to see them on the NPTEL website these are just tutorial sessions okay uh, 
to make you familiarize with the problems which come from the theory which you have learnt. So that is the main motto of conducting these tutorial classes. Okay. I am uh, Sumant Murug. I am a PhD research scholar in Department of Mechanical Engineering at uh, IIT Bombay. So mainly I will be conducting these uh, tutorial sessions every week, uh, Friday 7 to 8 pm. Along with me, another additional TA will be conducting the sessions on Sunday 3 to 4 pm. Okay. So we will be dividing the problems based on the topic. Okay. Then we will uh, cover those questions. If you have any difficulties with these questions, you can ask the doubts on the chat box. Okay. You are free to ask the uh, doubts on the chat box at any given time. Okay. So I hope I am uh, clear with the instructions. So, so the way in which I'll go with these tutorial sessions is I'll briefly recap the contents of the current week. Okay. So this week it is week number three. So I'll briefly recap the contents which you went through in the NPTEL video lectures. Okay. And then we will try to solve the problems based on these topics. Okay. So last week that is that is week two uh, can you guys write down on the chat box what were the main contents which were covered let me give you a hint it was mainly based on discretization principles okay so can you guys write down on the chat box what were the contents which were uh, you know kind of uh, dealt with in the week two So we went through some discretization techniques. Okay. Can you write down which were the discretization techniques which we discussed? Yes, the and do finite volume method, finite element method, finite difference methods. So particularly in finite difference methods, what were the schemes which we saw? Mainly what were the topics like which we covered? There was one important series which we discussed, which will help us to calculate the uh, finite difference formula in terms of the functional format. What was that? Yeah, Taylor series. Good. So we use Taylor series to obtain functional form of a differential equation. What I meant by functional form is you have something like d phi by dx a partial derivative okay dou phi by dou x okay now you have to write this in terms of the function at discrete points because in computational fluid dynamics you have discrete points at which you want to calculate the solution right so you try to write the partial differential equation in terms of discrete uh, in terms of function values at discrete points okay the main intention being that you ultimately have to make the computer to solve those equation now the computer cannot directly solve the pde okay so you try to convert it into a, a discrete functional format and through that you come up with linear algebraic equations these linear algebraic equations can be solved easily through some iterative schemes or even through some direct schemes on a computer. So basically you come up with uh, a form like Ax is equal to B, a linear algebraic equation, okay, uh, where A represents the coefficient matrix, X is the variable which you want to find out, okay. So there are two approaches, one is the direct approach, the other is the iterative approach through which you can uh, finally calculate the values of x. So for that we need to have linear algebraic equations through which we can form the coefficient matrix A. Okay. So to come up till the linear algebraic equation you need discretization. Okay. And uh, so that is why we discussed these three different schemes. Okay. 
what was the main issue with finite difference method can you write down on the chat box due to which we went to finite volume and finite element because finite difference was very easy we saw that just uh, use the taylor series to get the equation but there was some issue with finite difference yes irregular structure any other comments what was the disadvantage with finite difference method only one person has replied what about others what are your thoughts only rectangular grids can be used in finite difference method any other comments fdm can be used only on structured grids okay any other issues which we saw okay so this was the main issue okay uh, what dbendu and uh, vithul have written on the chat box that uh, we cannot use finite difference for irregular structure and that is we cannot uh, use it for like unstructured grids it can be used only on structured grids okay we only get solutions at grid points yeah partially correct but even for other uh, finite element or finite volume also we get at certain uh, i mean points only but the thing is that these points can be arranged in any van in any manner okay with the finite volume method and the finite element method whereas that is not possible with finite difference method okay yeah the b and you are correct okay so that is why we saw the other methods also but anyway in the other methods also which we saw finally when we have to kind of find d5 by dx at some particular phase of the control volume in finite volume method we finally go with the differ finite difference only okay and uh, at boundary points uh, we again go with the finite difference only okay so we have to kind of understand the taylor series which is very important okay we have tried to understand that in the last week itself uh, we saw how we can come up with uh, the discretized linear algebraic equation using this finite difference method which was uh, taken from taylor series now in this week uh, just a second in this week Uh, we extended the way in which we calculate the finite difference formulation uh, through a taylor table approach okay we had a trivial method wherein we used to use the taylor series to expand say a function at x plus delta x say x minus delta x uh, in terms of function at x okay then we used to do uh, some manipulations to come up with f dash of x okay but what was the main issue with that approach can you write down on the chat box so last week we have seen some approach wherein we used to get the function f dash of x okay but uh, why we need to go with the taylor table approach what is the need can you write on the chat box this is very important to understand okay so because uh, whatever you study you need to first know why you have to study only then you will get some interest to study the one that particular method okay higher order accuracy more points are available tds improve accuracy okay 
some good comments are coming okay so yes when we have more number of points on which through which we have to calculate the finite difference approximation which usually occurs when we need more accuracy okay so yeah i have shared it in the google drive okay lokesh i have shared it on the google drive and i have shared the link of the google drive also just now okay but anyways uh, since some of you have joined just now i will also share the link at the end of the class okay uh, since many people joined late okay so i'll just share it at the end of the class okay yeah so we were uh, coming with a necessity yeah so when we need more accuracy we have to uh, take more number of uh, stencil points by stencil points i mean if you want to calculate the derivative at say point i you have to take uh, more number of uh, points i plus 1 i plus 2 i plus 3 okay uh, so when you take more number of points it usually leads to higher accuracy why we will see that Uh, the truncation error uh, will reduce okay so that is why you get higher accuracy so uh, so in those situations when you take more number of stencil points okay so at that particular point this becomes tedious the taylor approach uh, the taylor uh, series expansion and manipulating it okay to come up with a value of f dash you can definitely do it it's not impossible but it is tedious so we come up with a more simpler approach okay uh, which is like an approximation of this taylor series only okay so but this is very useful when you have large number of points in stencils which is required for higher accuracy okay so all the points are valid whichever wo, uh, whichever was written on the comments okay so i appreciate your thoughts on this okay because uh, you have given different uh, meanings but anyway all those kind of come and join the same main uh, portion i would say so yes that is that was a very good uh, i mean comments okay so i will share it logesh i will share it uh, at the end of the class the google drive link and the uh, youtube channel link also okay uh, so yeah so that is why we came up with a taylor table approach okay and then uh, we kind of uh, used the taylor table approach to calculate the first order uh, differential okay uh, with a larger number of stencils then we also saw the truncation error and what is the effect of stencils uh, stencil size okay um, so this is what i'll be mainly discussing in the problems today okay so this is part 1 of week 3 week 3 can be divided into two parts this was part 1 okay and the questions which i'll be discussing today are mainly on this part 1 okay uh, so can you guys write down on the chat box what was the second part which you saw in the week 3 contents i had discussed it, uh, it in the starting of the session also apart from this what else did you see in the week 3 contents can you write on the chat box so one thing you had seen is table taylor table approach for calculating finite difference what was the other thing wave number yeah so why did you study wave number what was the main thing there i have said this earlier also and i am repeating it okay so uh, you are expected to go through the weekly contents okay uh, it will uh, really help this tutorial sessions okay uh, because we will be mainly concentrating on the problems okay i will not i am not there here to discuss this uh, theory aspects i will just briefly brush up okay so that it will be helpful for, for problem solving okay you are uh expected to go through the weekly contents okay and that, uh, so that we can have a more interactive kind of sessions okay um wave number for accessing higher frequency waves sinusoidal functions have finite higher order derivative 
yeah uh, partially correct but but what was the need uh, what was the need of this calculating wave number and uh, what was the uh, i mean the the main uh, intention behind using the the sinusoidal functions yeah sinusoidal functions we used them okay uh, but we used them to do what what was like the leverage point i mean like you might have studied the modified wave number theory right uh, in the weekly content so why was that studied why let me ask the question very straight away why did you calculate the modified wave number okay let me ask it like this you have calculated the modified wave number okay in the weekly contents you saw that how to calculate it okay i am not going into the details uh, but why was it necessary that is what i am asking why did you calculate it okay okay let me try to give some hints okay yes the bindu has written how accurate our approximation is so you saw the variation of the exact wave number k and the modified number k dash okay for uh, different uh, uh, grid size okay for equivalent cd2 and cd4 accuracy yes you as an example you you applied the uh, modified wave number approach on cd2 and cd4 central difference second order central difference fourth order scheme okay to exactly measure the accuracy of the uh, approximation so whenever you take any particular scheme sometimes it is again difficult to uh, get the order of accuracy of the scheme okay you have to compare between two schemes assume and you do not know the order of accuracy so you use this modified wave number approach okay to calculate how accurate is the our scheme okay at a given grid size okay so when you plot the variation of exact wave number versus the modified wave number for the exact wave number you have a very straight linear line whereas after some uh, grid size the modified wave number deflects from the exact wave number line okay so what that means is till that particular point you can expect that scheme to give you accurate results okay after that the results will deviate so you saw that in second order central difference scheme the deviation was happening much earlier than the fourth order central difference scheme which indicates that the fourth order central difference scheme is more accurate because even at a higher grid size you are getting good results okay so that was the main intention but the problems uh, based on the modified wave number will be uh, discussed in the next class okay so let us come to main content uh, details of today's uh, tutorial session so we will be mainly seeing first how to construct the taylor table which you have already seen in the weekly contents but i'll just brush it up okay so you considered uh, the following approximation for a first order differential at say i point and uh, you try to ex express it as a uh, polynomial with uh, function values at i plus k points the coefficient represented by ak in the following manner which is given in this particular equation okay so uh, the main agenda was to calculate the values of ak okay uh, so that you kind of come up with an expression for f dash you come up with an discrete mathematical expression for a partial derivative ultimately using the taylor series approach also you are doing the same thing through some manipulations but here we are kind of using an algebraic method okay uh, i would say uh, to come up with a expression okay so when you assume this you construct a table okay this is mainly called as taylor table so uh, let me just explain this taylor table okay so in the different rows you write down the expression which you want to calculate so i have a stencil of size 2 that is i have i i plus 1 and i plus 2 assume that okay so you kind of express this f dash as 
a naught f i plus a one f i plus one, a two f i plus two. Assuming that the uh, forward uh, stencil values are uh, available. Okay, that is why i i plus one and i plus two. Okay, so you write down this in the different rows. Okay, uh, f dash at i a naught f i a one f i plus one, a two f i plus two. Okay, you write down in this uh, different rows, and in the columns. You write down the Taylor series uh, functions. Okay, when you uh, use the Taylor series, which we have discussed in the last week, you have f i plus one is equal to. You can approximate it to be f i, and in terms of f i dash, that is the derivatives of the function. Okay, so you write it down in that particular menu manner. And one of the main question which has to be addressed here is how many number of columns should we take? Because we can go with any order here. F I okay here it is used only till the third derivative. You can take fourth derivative also, but why is it not taken here? You have restricted only to say four columns here. Okay, why is it necessary? Okay, yeah, this image might not be very clear. I am sorry for that. Okay. You have only f i f i dash f i double dash that is second derivative and then you have the third derivative. Okay, so why do you need only these many things? That is the main question. Wave number approach. The bhiendo I will come at the last of this session because the next uh, tutorial session is will be mainly based on wave number. Okay. So mainly wave number questions can be answered in that session also, but let us focus on the Taylor table. Yeah, so it depends on the stencil size. Okay, so mainly you need to find uh, three different uh, coefficients: a naught, a one, and a two. For that, you need three equations. There are three unknowns. For that. You should understand that you need three equations, okay, to solve the three unknowns. These three equations you will get from this f i f i dash f i double dash, okay. F i triple dash, which is third derivative, is not mandatory here, but it is just taken to see the truncation error, okay. So in the real sense, it is not required, okay. If you want to just calculate a naught a one and a two, okay. So then, what is the next step? Okay, yeah, number of constant is equal to number of equations we can solve. Yes, correct. So the next step is we express f i dash in terms of multiples of this column values. So f i dash you can express only as f i dash. Okay, you cannot express it like uh, in terms of f i or f i double dash. So here only it is one in this particular row. Now the second row you have a naught into f i. So you should multiply f i by a naught. Only then you will get a naught f i. So a naught will come here. Okay. So all the other columns are zero. Whereas if you go to this third row, here you have a one f i plus one. Okay. Now you have to express f i plus one as a function of f i and f i dash. So from these point onwards, we will use Taylor series. Okay. Because we do not have f i plus one in these columns. Okay. So you are forced to use Taylor series here. Okay. What you can write? You can write a one f i plus one as a one. Just ignore a one. Okay. If a one was not there, how would you write f i plus one? You would write it as f i plus h into f i dash plus h square by two into f i double dash. Right. That is the Taylor series. Okay. I hope you understand this. We are just multiplying by a one on all the sides. Okay, so that is the main thing here. Okay, uh, I hope this is clear because all the problems, not all the problems, at least majority of the problems are based on this thing only. Okay, to constructing the Taylor table. Okay, so f i plus one will be expressed in this manner as a uh, sum of these column values. Okay, that is the f i f i dash f i double dash. Similarly, for i plus two also, we can do the same exercise. For time being, you can ignore the coefficient values a two. Okay, just see f i plus two can be written as f i 
प्लस टू एच इंटू एफ आई डैश ओके प्लस टू एच द होल स्क्वायर बाई टू फैक्टोरियल इंटू एफ आई डबल डैश ओके देन वी जस्ट मल्टीप्लाई बाई टू ऑन ऑल दके सो दैट इज द वे इन विच यू कंस्ट्रक्ट द टेलर टेबल ओके सो वंस यू कंस्ट्रक्ट द टेबल टेलर टेबल ओके द नेक्स्ट थिंग इज टू फाइंड आउट दिस एक्सप्रेशन फॉर ए नॉट ए वन एंड ए टू सो वट इज द मेन थिंग विच इज डन हियर सी दीज रो वैल्यूज आर एडेड टूगेदर सो ओके यू कैन थिंक थिंक ऑफ इट लाइक दिस यू राइट सम डिस्क्रीट इक्वेशन ओके एफ आई डैश इज इक्वल टू एफ आई डैश ए नॉट एफ आई इज इक्वल टू ए नॉट एफ आई ए वन एफ आई प्लस वन इज इक्वल टू दिस ओके यू कैन राइट डाउन लाइक दिस ओके then maybe you can add up all the equations okay and then you will finally get up uh, get this equation so fi plus a not fi fi plus 1 these things you will get okay okay we will come to this uh, doubt section on the assignments uh, later on okay i will try to convey it okay sandeep i will try to convey it okay um yeah so this is the approach in which we are trying to calculate okay in a very simple manner if you have to understand you have to sum all the rows together okay like fi a not fi a1 fi plus 1 okay so this is the way in which you calculate then fi you take common a not plus a1 plus a2 you get okay i was just try to explain the i was trying to explain the logic behind this but if you want to remember something like you can do direct addition of this rows also that will also work okay now you know that this should go to zero the lhs should go to zero okay so that is why you equate this a not plus a1 plus a2 to be equal to zero then 1 plus a1h plus 2h a2 also equal equate it to zero then the third term also you equate it to zero then you get three equations and three unknowns through which you get a not a1 and a2 okay we will try to see this in the uh, example problems okay so let us see just the first uh, question higher stencil size results in obtaining finite difference formula which is they have asked about the accuracy and the how much computational time it takes when you have a higher stencil size by higher stencil uh, uh, size you mean that there are more number of points okay fi fi plus 1 fi plus 2 okay so what should be the answer for this see don't confuse between delta x and higher size stencil okay Higher size stencil, they mean to say that they are taking more number of discrete points to calculate the F I dash. Okay, that is they are taking F I, F I plus one, F I plus two, as much as possible. Okay, so that is the that is the meaning of higher stencil size. A and D. Major majority of the people have written A and D. Okay, let us see. Uh, computational time we will like try to look it through the common sense okay so when you have a higher number of points through which you need to calculate a derivative okay so for example assume that i am calculating derivative like this fi dash is equal to fi plus 1 minus fi minus 1 divided by 2 delta x square that is second order central difference scheme uh, the second approach is using a fourth order central difference scheme Wherein I have f i dash is equal to say f i plus four, f i plus three, f i plus two, then f i minus two, f i minus three. Okay, whatever terms are there. Now you need to think like how a computer takes it. Okay, so it needs to take different function values, do the summation. Okay, so definitely when you have a higher stencil size, it takes more computational time. Okay, because it has to add up many more terms. so it is more computationally intensive okay fourth option is definitely correct let us see what happens to the accuracy okay so here a uh, taylor series uh, expansion for fi plus 1 fi minus 1 is given okay so uh, through this uh, we can try to calculate the 
I mean the the stencil uh, I mean the error which is obtained okay so you can try to calculate the fi dash value uh, but let me ask you a question the analysis which I have done here is it uh, correct or is it incorrect I have tried to calculate the truncation error uh, I think it's not visible okay I have tried to calculate the truncation error okay for the second order uh, finite difference scheme through Taylor series I have done it I have not done it using Taylor table okay and then uh, what happens to the error I have tried to the calculation let me ask you a question is it correct or is there any issue with this kind of calculation Can you write down on the chat box whether this is fine or whether something is missing here? See, as I said earlier, there can be two meanings to this question. Okay, one is the delta x value. Okay, you are taking a higher stencil size. Okay, delta is missing. See that delta I have considered it as h. Okay, okay. So one thing is you uh, uh you take this question with two different meanings. Okay, uh, higher stencil size. Okay, uh, meaning you have a very large number of stencils. That is, you have a phi, a phi plus one, large number of stencils. Okay, through that it becomes computationally more expensive. But the way in which I have done the error analysis, that is based on the the spacing between the stencils. Okay, that is the edge which is given here. Okay, so if you take the question in a other way, that if the spacing between the stencil becomes uh, very say large higher okay so i have written h dash is equal to h by 2 that is incorrect right <laughs> the question it is asked higher <laughs> higher size stencil okay okay so h dash is equal to h by 2 how can it be correct <laughs> okay so this kind of analysis is not appropriate okay so if you see through this lens then you might feel that okay the error will increase because higher size stencil if you think of it as the spacing then h dash will become say 2h then error will increase by 4 times e dash will become approximately 4 times e then the error will increase so it should be less accurate then but if the, the true meaning of this question is something else okay the true meaning lies in you are taking more number of stencil points okay you have uh, more number of points in that case the computational intensity will increase along with that the scheme will become more accurate why why will the scheme become more accurate okay the answer to this will be answer uh, the co answer to this question will be answered in the later questions okay when we see through question number two three we will try to calculate the truncation error with a uh, higher stencil size and lower stencil size okay so what happens is that in general uh, if you see the Taylor table also when we go on to the higher stencil uh, numbers okay what happens with this uh, in the Taylor table if you see okay here you kind of uh, get say the order of accuracy to be h cube divided by h which is for f dash you get second order but if you are taking more number of points say uh, 5 plus 3 then you have to go till fourth order derivative then it will become h raised to 4 divided by h okay if you are taking more points which is third order accurate okay so when you are increasing the stencil size you clearly see that the truncation error is reducing that is the order of accuracy is increasing when you take higher stencil okay so that is why the order of accuracy increases okay yeah h remains fixed here that is the meaning of the question yes it is correct h remains fixed h, uh, h raised to 2 to higher order of h 
yeah mainly uh, when you take higher uh, stencil size you kind of extend this table okay f i plus 3 here you you need f f raised to 4 assume uh, assume that you will you will have f raised to 4 then you have h raised to 4 terms also so in the truncation error that will be counted here only h raised to 3 will be counted whereas there h raised to 4 will be counted okay so which means that the order of accuracy is improving okay so that is the basic meaning of the question uh, I hope this is clear why A and D should be the correct answer. Okay, the uh, analysis which I have done here is incorrect. Okay, so let us see the second question. Yeah, in this question, we will mainly try to construct the Taylor table and try to calculate the values of A, B, and C. So you can do this question along with me okay um, so we have to find the coefficients a b and c uh, to find out the first order uh, differential term and the order of accuracy is second order okay even if they don't give second order i mean it doesn't matter actually uh, so the first order derivative we have to calculate in terms of these three uh, uh, stencil uh, points okay and we are required to calculate the values of a b and c for a delta x of 0 0.2 okay so we will try to first construct the taylor table for this okay there is a, sh uh, a shortcut also for the answer but uh, that will not work in the descriptive type uh, questions okay if this question was descriptive in nature uh, then that shortcut will not work uh, but uh, i'll discuss that at the end of the uh, class okay so that is why you might be writing C as the option. Okay. Uh, so, but we will try to see how it is calculated. Okay. So first we have to construct the Taylor table like this. Okay. So uh, whatever values are there here, you just write it down on the different rows. Okay. So fi dash, fi minus one, fi, fi plus one, whichever terms are there in this particular equation, you write it down as a rows. And then in the Taylor series, you know, you have fi, fi dash, fi double dash in the Taylor series okay these terms are there in the Taylor series okay you write it write down them as the columns and why I have restricted again only till fi double dash because there are three unknowns we need three equations only okay so that is why I have calculated only three columns okay if I want to calculate the order of accuracy truncation error I have to go for fourth column also but since that is not asked in this question I have restricted only to three columns I hope I am clear why I have calculated only three columns here okay now just put on the values fi dash it will become equal to fi dash okay 0 1 and 0 okay and then uh, we need fi minus 1 now we have to express this in terms of taylor series because we have fi is in the columns okay so we use uh, the taylor series okay so fi minus 1 can be expressed as fi minus h into fi dash plus h square by 2 into fi double dash I hope this is clear the way in which I have uh, written the values. You can also try to uh, write them down along with me to solve this problem. Okay. Uh, then the other step is to uh, write similarly fi plus 1. fi will be again equal to 1 0 0 only. Okay. No problem with that 1 0 0 and fi plus 1 you can write again in terms of Taylor series. Now uh, you have these coefficients uh, on the RHS. Uh, uh, to get that you have to kind of uh, multiply these uh, rows with the coefficients okay so why i have taken minus one is that if you bring it uh, to the rhs okay then it will become minus fi dash we have to express it in a single line okay so that is why i have written minus one otherwise you can write minus a minus b minus c and put this as plus one also into that is also fine but it will increase just the complexity that is why i have minus one here okay so once you kind of multiply them you can then try to get the equation minus fi dash plus a into fi minus 1 plus this p into fi okay that you can try to do okay plus this c into fi plus 1 okay now this uh, should be equal to the summation of these columns again okay so you have to this uh, sum the columns with the multiplied form okay and then we have to try to calculate the value of this a b and c 
So when we just uh, do that particular exercise, we land up with this equation. Okay, uh, this is the the first column which we add to get this particular form. Then the second column when we add, okay, we get a plus b plus c of f i. Third column we get minus one plus a h plus c h into f i dash. Third column we get a h square by two plus c h square by two into this. Okay. Uh, so I hope uh, this uh, formulation is clear. Um, are there any queries with uh, the the way in which we came up till here? Because after the after this, it is very simple. Okay, there is uh, not much to do after doing this particular equation. Is this clear? How we landed up with this equation? If there are any queries, uh, please let me know at this particular moment. Okay, if you have any queries, uh, when you are solving the problems, maybe you will come to know the issues. Okay, um, then you can let me know. Okay, why minus one? See, in the equation we have f i dash is equal to this so and so. Okay, so uh, mainly I have to arrange it in the uh, the format which I showed in the beginning slides. Okay. Like this, f i dash plus so and so. Okay, so what I have tried to done is that I have tried to bring this on the R H S, the f i dash on the R H S. Uh, then it becomes minus f i dash. Okay, so that is why we have to multiply it by minus one. The other option is to keep it as one only. Multiply this by minus a minus b minus c. It is also possible. Okay, so uh, I hope you are all clear with the way in which we came up with this equation. Okay. Now it is very simple. You just uh, equate these uh, coefficients to zero of f i f i dash f i double dash because the R H S will be zero only. Na? If you take minus f dash i plus a into f i minus one, this thing, then it will go to it should go to zero. Now to make it zero, these uh, coefficients should become zero, and you solve for a, b, and uh, c because you have three equations here. Okay. These are the three equations: a plus b plus c is equal to zero, and these two equations. Now you uh, sub, uh, substitute the value of h, and then try to get the value of a, b, and c. Okay. Uh, where is the formula? Uh, which formula are you talking about? See, this is the uh, method through which we try to calculate the coefficients a, b, and c. There is no particular formula. See, we construct this table. I hope the construction of table is clear. Okay. Once the Table construction is done. You have to just add up the column values. Okay, so f i dash into minus one plus f i minus one into a f i into b plus f i plus one into c is equal to uh, this uh, column first. Okay, so that will become a plus b plus c into f i plus. You have to just add up. You can write equal to sign here. Okay, for understanding. Uh, in between the first column and the second column, yeah, or you say zeroth column and the first column, you can write equal to sign. Okay, so this should be uh, you equate this to this whole sum. Okay, so you can try to understand it uh, in a much better way if you just write it down in a different equation. Say f i dash is equal to f i dash. I'll write down. Next, I'll write down f i minus one is equal to one minus h, like the Taylor series expansion. Okay. Then I just add uh, add the LHS, add the RHS. Okay, so then also you get up with the same equation. Okay, you come up with the same equation. Okay, I hope this uh, method is understood. Okay, the way in which you come up with this equation. Then you just equate this uh, coefficients to zero. Then you land up with three different equations. You solve them. Okay, you get the expression for A, B, and C. Okay. So, uh, in a descriptive uh, descriptive uh, way, you have to uh, find the answers like this. But uh, a simple uh, workaround will be that, as one of the student has mentioned, that uh, the coefficients need to be symmetric. That is, a plus b plus c should be uh, going to zero. If you see the option, uh, only the c option 
uh, in that particular option the coefficients uh, the sum of the coefficients is going to zero okay so yeah in that way also you can guess the answer but uh, this is more of a descriptive approach uh, through which uh, you kind of calculate the values okay logesh uh, is this understood the way in which we are doing the calculation uh, what is the issue can you write on the chat box i don't i did not get your uh, issue mainly basically we want to just write down the partial differential equation in terms of functional format that is the main thing which we do in cfd okay so that is the main thing which we do in cfd okay discretization which is called as discretization in a very crude sense i am telling okay this is a very crude sense so uh, we try to write down the partial differential equation in, in this functional format so uh, there we come up with this coefficients which we have to somehow calculate okay and uh, there are uh, there are mainly two methods last time we saw how using taylor series uh, okay we can do this okay if you have uh, practice okay then definitely you will uh, understand this uh, very easily okay but even if you don't know this kind of equations then you can uh, surf through the net and kind of get to know the values of a b and c okay so uh, definitely if you want to develop some course and all then that uh, uh, knowing these values it's not a necessary or deriving also is not necessary you can get it through some handbooks also so okay don't worry about that okay so let us move on to the next question uh, this is also a similar question but with a more comp complexity i would say okay so uh, we have to follow a similar approach here that we have to construct a taylor table first okay so uh, we have uh, uh, now we have th uh, i i plus 1 i plus 2 i plus 3 we have four stencil points okay so we need that is why we need here four unknowns and four unknowns leads to four columns okay so that is why we have four columns here okay that is the main reason now once you try figure this out then the other things are easy uh, they, they are the repetition of what we did previously okay once you have to figure out how many columns we need okay uh, for taylor series expansion okay uh, this way any this thing anyway it will be fixed uh, fi dash and whatever is there in this equation now you just uh, fill in this uh, table as usual like how i explained in the last problem and then just uh, multiply again by minus 1 since we have to bring it to the rhs and then you come up with uh, you just multiply these uh, rows with a b c and d respectively for the different stencils okay then you just uh, equate the zeroth column with the rest of the column 1 2 3 4 fourth column okay so then you land up with the uh, equation which when you kind of uh, solve now the main important thing is how you have to solve this because uh, three equations and three unknowns you can solve it uh, through your calculator also i think okay so but we here have four equations and four unknowns okay so uh, mainly you can use some online tools or uh, so matlab but uh, i personally have uh, yeah you can use the shortcut but uh, when the question is descriptive in nature like um, in exam if you kind of get a descriptive question at that time i am trying to explain how you can try to calculate okay so you can use some online tools or you can use some uh, matlab uh, course also to kind of calculate the values of a b c and d so okay so yeah so c should be the correct answer here now let us just go through one final question okay because all the other questions are very similar to this okay so uh, i'll not uh, uh, repeat the same thing okay so one thing is we have to calculate the order of accuracy uh, in this particular uh, uh, equation uh, in this particular uh, finite difference scheme okay now how do you determine the order of accuracy 
so if you have to just determine the order of accuracy it is uh, very easy actually if you see okay so uh, what you need to do is that uh, so there are two things you they can ask you to calculate the uh, truncation error the leading term in the truncation error that is one question the second question is order of accuracy order of accuracy you can determine very in a very simple manner okay so you had four unknowns there you took four columns okay just add one more column uh, wherein you take the fourth derivative okay here i have not added it okay so what happens is that when you take that column till here you have h raised to three terms okay there you come up with h raised to four terms okay so you might be thinking that the scheme will become fourth order accurate so is the scheme fourth order accurate or is it something else Three. So I have got two answers now. Okay, three. Why? Why it is third or accurate? Can you guys write down on the chat box? Yeah, three is correct answer. But why three? I think I had explained this in the last week also. You have to be very careful with that truncation error. Yes, yes. Very good. H raised to four by H. because we are trying to calculate f dash in that time we kind of divide it by this uh, coefficient okay so uh, if we see order then it will be h raised to 4 is there in this fourth derivative column and then divide by h so it will become third order okay uh, so can we say for a skewed stencil order of accuracy is equal to stencil size minus 1 yes i think so that's a good uh, comment i would say yeah you can uh, Uh, in uh, most of the cases um, i do not know where it will contradict uh, i'll let you know if there is some cases where it will contradict but uh, yeah i think it should be correct what you are telling hmm? uh, okay i'll just uh, share the google drive link and the um, youtube link where you can watch the recorded lectures okay um, i hope all of you have received these links okay yeah so that is the way in which you calculate the order of accuracy okay uh, let us try to do just one a more major question which is the way in which you calculate the leading uh, term of the truncation error sorry okay the question number 5 was similar to the previous week's question that if you kind of uh, increase the mesh refinement by x then your order of accuracy uh, will actually go by how much for a second order uh, scheme so you have x square in the second order scheme so uh, definitely it will improve by what should be the answer so you have a second order finite difference scheme the order of accuracy will be h square in that okay the leading term will be h square of the uh, truncation error so now you are uh, doing the mesh refinement by a factor x that is h dash will be equal to h by x okay no you are not specifying uh, why is it for any other answers can you guys write down the answer for this question on the chat box this, because this question very similar question we had discussed in the last week so i thought let me not go through this any other answers see what they are telling is that uh, h dash that is the delta x the delta x new is uh, delta x by 2 delta x original by uh, x sorry not 2 uh, by x that is the mesh has been refined by x times okay h dash is equal to h by x exactly so in that term what will happen to the error the truncation error it is a second order scheme so truncation error leading term will be h square so uh, you have to answer now at least <laughs> okay 
Can others write down on the chat box what should be the answer? Yeah, apart from Apurva, can others also write down, please? Should it be x square or should it be 2 raised to x? What should be the answer? You can try to work it on a paper and, and okay, if you are getting really confused with this. Okay. okay, it's very simple if you see. Okay, uh, if you see the leading term of this uh, truncation error, it will be h square. Now you have uh, okay, h dash is equal to h by x. Okay. So then you kind of get the leading term as h square by x square. Okay. Uh, okay. You can take the x square common. Okay. Then you land up with again h square by whatever the leading term was there. So you cannot exactly say that the improvement is x square. The correct answer is d only x square. But uh, it is approximately it is approximately 1 by x square of the original truncation error. Because you have some other terms also, okay, you need to take that also into account, okay. Uh, you can ask from your friends, Lokesh, okay. Uh, so, that was one question wherein we have to find the, uh, um, the improvement in the accuracy. Now, the question 6 is again the same as the first two questions, okay. You need to find the values of A1, uh, A2, A3, A4, okay. Uh, similarly, you can use the Taylor table approach. Uh, I'll be sharing this uh, on the Google Drive. Okay, maybe you guys can look over it and you can calculate the A1, A2, A3 values. So, what I wanted to discuss mainly here was that how do you calculate the leading term of the truncation? Okay. Uh, so, as I said, when you want to calculate the order, you just uh, can do it through the analytical formula which one student has written okay the stencil size minus one okay directly you will get the order of accuracy but if you want to find the exact leading term okay uh, exact leading term in the truncation error then you have to calculate the truncation error so okay so the way in which you calculate the truncation error this is as follows okay uh, wait a minute Okay, for this question, uh, what you had was there were uh, like around 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. There are around uh, 4 uh, coefficients. So, I have taken 4 columns, okay, here. Uh, okay, so this was question number 6. So, in the Taylor table, uh, what you do is that now you take the another column because you have four unknowns so that is why you have taken only four columns this is to calculate the unknowns that is fine but when we have to calculate the uh, truncation error you need to also take the fourth col uh, sorry the fifth column into account which is f fourth derivative f fourth derivative okay for that if you kind of calculate the uh, tabular values okay so then what you get is this particular equation so okay so you get in terms of fourth derivative so this is the truncation error which we want to calculate so ignore the first part okay so this is the sum of the fourth column that is the truncation error okay so you kind of get it in terms of h raised to 4 uh, the truncation error first term but be very careful again okay uh, then you should not think that it is fourth order accurate okay uh, don't get into that misconception uh, misconception okay so you kind of get the truncation error like this so this is obtained using the fourth column uh, sorry the fifth column fifth column okay because till fourth column you are using it to calculate the coefficients okay so when you substitute the values of a1 a2 and uh, a3 a4 which you had got using the taylor taylor uh, taylor table approach uh, you kind of calculate the exact truncation error okay so when you do that particular formulation uh, you land up with the exact truncation error so h raised to 4 by 24 i had just taken common and the values of a1 a3 and a4 i had calculated it previously using taylor table approach when you substitute those no so you will get the exact uh, truncation error okay and the leading term uh, 
so the leading term is the fourth order derivative okay so that is called the leading term because you have fifth order derivative also you have sixth order also but the leading the first one is fourth order so that is why this we have to take in okay in the error terms okay so then when you see that you get uh, h raised to 3 so that is why it is third order accurate okay uh, and you have two options in this uh, so uh, depending on the coefficient values so here you get h cube by 72 minus h cube by 24 plus this so which corresponds to uh, third option okay so this is the way in which you calculate the truncation uh, error uh, exact truncation error okay roughly you can calculate the order of accuracy but if you have to calculate the truncation error this is the way in which you have to do i hope i am clear with this so these were the some problems which I wanted to discuss today. Okay, so one is the exact calculation of coefficients. Okay, a, b, c, d, whatever is there for the stencil. Okay, to come up with a finite difference formula, that is one thing. Number two, how you calculate the order of accuracy. Okay, one of the student gave a very beautiful answer. You can just take the stencil size minus one. Okay, I hope that should be able to give you the order of accuracy. Yes, and then the third thing is you want to calculate the truncation error uh, at least the leading term that is the first term okay so how do you do that you add an extra column if you have four unknowns okay then you add the fifth column and then sum it up okay and then substitute the values of a1 a2 and a3 a4 whatever are there okay then through that you get the exact truncation error so that is the third point okay uh, so are there any issues with these three points please let me know in the chat box uh, otherwise we can um, uh, close the today's meeting okay so these uh, slides will be available okay um, on the google drive you can go through them okay if you have any issues while solving your uh, actual assignments okay uh, I hope you might get similar questions on your assignment so you can refer to this and then maybe try to uh, do them okay so is that fine so if you have any queries you can ask me okay otherwise uh, you can uh, just leave the meeting Yeah, and last week I think uh, there were two questions which had come in. Uh, one was the uh, the nature of equation, uh, sorry, the nature of Laplace equation, okay, uh, in one D. Uh, see, in one D we saw that it just becomes a d square phi by d x square. Uh, so, yeah, you can mail me. Okay. Uh, this is my contact mail. Okay. Uh, so the thing is uh, mostly the Laplace equations are restricted to 2D and 3D you can have it in 1D but it is not strictly a Laplace equation as I said earlier it can be a general diffusion equation also ok so in that sense uh, there are no discontinuities associated with the solutions so uh, for that general diffusive equation you cannot call it to be an elliptic in nature ok so if you see the solution also of d square phi by dx square is equal to 0 it becomes like something like vx plus c something it's a constant line okay so there is no discontinuity and since there is no discontinuity uh, so ideally it should become parabolic in nature okay so the thing is you cannot take it as a laplace equation first of all it's a general diffusive equation uh, you have to try to kind of uh, digest this fact in 2D and 3D you can call a one particular equation as okay this is strictly Laplace equation and then you can calculate the nature okay and there was another question which I remember okay uh, the smoothness of the solution okay so mainly any function uh, if it is uh, uh, if it has a, if it is continuous that is if it is differential at every point okay you call the function as smooth okay now the smoothness of solution means uh, whenever you have a pd uh, so the solution which you obtain for the pd should be smooth that is 
the solution which you obtain for the PDE should be again continuously differentiable. Okay. So if you, for example, have uh, uh, f uh, d phi by dx and you find phi uh, such that phi is equal to x. Okay. So it is a straight line. Okay. So it is continuous at every point. Okay. So then uh, this partial differential equation has a smoothness. Okay. Uh, the solution has a smoothness. So that is what is meant by smoothness of a solution okay i hope uh, those who had asked this might have got some clarification on this so usually some pds do not have a smooth solution that is why we, we go with a uh, weak formulation uh, okay uh, in the in the finite element method we go with a, a, a weak formulation because uh, we try to see that at least at some point the equation the solution of the pd is continuous okay uh, we that is why we do a weak formulation so that was the main objective of discussing the smoothness of solutions in the weekly contents okay okay i hope this is uh, clear Okay, so thank you for attending. Okay, we can just close this session uh, since there are no doubts here. Okay, thank you.